everyone, I'm Rhiannon, I'm the UK Director of, of Care2 and um, I'm going to talk about welcome emails and how important they are. Um, so, you know, if you've just gone through an acquisition process and you've, you know, paid for online leads like channels like Care2, you, just as importantly, you need to think about your welcome, your welcome emails. Um, you know, the next two weeks are going to be just as important of how you're communicating with these people as to your kind of much longer term digital fundraising um, strategy. So. Um, these stats here is if best practices are followed, and I'll show you some examples of the sort of things you can expect to see or you should be seeing if you've kind of used channels like Care2. These people are warm, they've come onto your list, they've asked to hear from you. So if you kind of follow these, this process, you should see this high engagement level of between 40 and 60%. This is from clients that we see, or sort of real action rates, people you know, uh, click through to 20, 30%. But really, you know, just to show, I know it's two or three weeks, but the importance of a good welcome series strategy, that can affect your ROI throughout the whole six months from a standard kind of minus 20% of if you have a good welcome series and follow on to actually get up to sort of 40% in the first six months. So just kind of why do we do it? Um, and we all kind of, I think a lot of us know this in the room, but it's good to kind of refresh our memories. It starts a relationship. But more importantly, it puts parameters of what you're going to do. You're going to start telling these people how you're going to start communicating with them. You're going to ask them for money, potentially, or you're going to ask them to take different campaign actions. You know, these are really crucial things. This is how kind of relationships start. And something that I think is really interesting, and I've seen more clients do recently, is use the welcome series and use the welcome messages to acquire even more data. And you can use it really, really kind of creatively. So just quick tips here, it kind of goes without saying, speed is absolutely key. Um, we recommend, you know, with clients of our own that you get your first welcome email out 24 hours after someone signed up to your list, either paid or even organically. Keeping it simple, clean, you know, simple calls to action and testing and personalising. But the main things to kind of call out here that I think is really interesting is this, the third point about the time to convert will greatly depend on the issue itself. So that's converting to donor or becoming, you know, uh, you know t t taking a campaign action. You know, one size doesn't fit all. If someone, it might be appropriate on the first welcome email to ask for money. It might not be, but it really might be so, you know, plan for this, have a template, and really kind of like take this into consideration because it's the issue and the cause that people have come into. And then at the same time as get to know these people, these people have signed up, but you need to ask them more questions, ask them surveys, ask them who they are, and use the welcome series to do this. So my first example um, is from the World Development Movement. Um, this is their first email list they used. They recruited their leads from, from Care2. But I've circled that first sentence because it's a really good example of setting parameters. But, you know, this is saying we're going to be in contact with you. We're going to ask you, give you campaign updates, and we're going to call you from the events team. And, you know, this is how you're going to be involved with World Development Movement. It's setting the parameters. This is what you can expect from us. So this kind of more idea of acquiring more data that I really like. So this is the Canal and River Trust. They did a campaign with us and acquired their leads. They worked with Blue State Digital on, and, on this email template. But I think what's really clever, this is the first email they sent to their new supporters. What I've highlighted there is that they've actually asked their new supporters to share that picture to then mirror the petition that was on Care2 to then go and get more sign-ups and then get even more data. So it's actually, they've paid for their data and they're getting a little bit more for free. It's a smart thing to do. Um, so I thought that was really good. Uh, shelter, I, think, I don't know if Shelter's in the room or not, but this was a welcome email. They used a really, really strong infographic, asking their supporters to share this infographic. They've come in on, on this cause, um, and then it was to share it on Facebook. So it's just a really kind of clear call to action, I think. You know, and they were getting kind of 60% open rates on that as well. And then if you don't have an infographic and if you don't have a sort of petition and you just, you know, you don't have to be overcomplicated about it. It can be really, really simple. This is a, um, an American client of ours, but this is just asking them, please take a quick survey. The key thing is you've got two weeks, three weeks maybe, and you've got to get as much information out of these people as you can to give them something to do. Um, goes without saying, but do use a really good CRM rather than a standalone mailer. That's really important for the Welcome Series. Blue State and engaging networks and e-companion are here and there are others as well. And you're seeing the whole supporter journey here and, um, you know, from a kind of donations, fundraising and campaigning perspective. Um, and just a kind of final nod here on, onto sort of mobile. 
that the most important stat for me here is the fact that action rates are 50% lower on a mobile template. So you've got this two-week time frame. You've got to get people doing things for you. So make sure you're using responsive templates. It's maybe seem like an obvious point, but it, you know, this, it's, a, it's one that you've really got to kind of invest in and invest in a mobile strategy. And then I think my last example is a um, responsive template on mobile. And that's it. Thanks very much.